I'm a director at 1010 Climate Action, which is a small climate change charity. We're based in Camden, on uh, just off Delancey Road, um, but we are active nationally. And our whole focus is public participation in the energy transition um, and the low carbon transition. And so our work has been heavily focused on community action. Um, positive, practical, collective action on climate change. That's a, that's a kind of strap line. So um, I want to talk about why it's so important and actually, uh, you know, the merits of community actions in the first place. In many ways, it is the most gratifying arena for action on climate change, right? Making changes to our own lives, um, as described by previous speaker, it can actually, it can be quite difficult to do in isolation. Um, you know, uh, it's much easier in solidarity, right? Changing ingrained behaviors that we've been doing for years and years is very hard to do. Um, but human beings are social animals and um, it just, the whole thing feels much more manageable in company. So if anyone here has ever tried to give up smoking, um, you know, if you think of giving up smoking, if you try to do this in a household or a friendship group where everyone else is still smoking, it's really nigh on impossible to make any progress. But if you're part of a collective effort to quit and everyone around you is also trying, the, your chances of success soar. So, um, you know, that's a kind of our first lesson is to just do stuff together. Don't try and do things on your own. It's really, really hard and it feels hard. Um, but it's also the case that a lot of our ingrained consumption choices that we know need to change, especially around things like mobility, moving around, are really a product of the choice architecture that we're making those decisions in. So you know, that's about what options are available to us. Um, you know, what does the system offer us as viable choices? So if you think of cycling, Cycling is a brilliant thing to do. Most Londoners say they will not cycle because they are afraid it is too dangerous because of all the cars. Now, this is very legitimate. Um, you know, uh, more than one cyclist is killed every week in London um, by cars and trucks. Um, so, you know, my wife is one of these people. She will not cycle. She knows how to ride a bike, um, but she won't do it. She won't cycle to work even though it's a sort of perfect distance for a bike trip because she's too fearful of being killed by a car. But our family was one of many that campaigned locally in support of a protected cycle lane in Hammersmith, and eventually we won. Um, it was the visible, audible, organized demand from local residents, the collective neighborhood level pressure to give this cycle lane the green light that gave our council the courage to face down the people who wanted to keep our high street as a lethally dangerous perpetual traffic jam. Unfortunately, my wife still uh, won't be able to cycle to work because Jeremy Clarkson uh, torpedoed the connecting cycle lane into Kensington where uh, the school that she helps run is. Um, but you know, th that, that fight continues. The point is that neighborhood action can change the choice architecture for individuals. You know, it can, it can make a choice to cycle to work, possible or impossible, you know? Um, and, and so, you know, it, it really interfaces with what you're able to do in your own life in that direction. Um, you know, likewise, I've been lobbying my residence association to support lockable bike storage in our square. And this summer we'll get two storage units installed, which for people who do rely on their bikes and live in small flats, you know, that's gonna be a game changer because we regularly have all our bikes stolen in the square. Um, you know, if you've got a good bike, it gets nicked. Um, I also managed to get EV charge points installed in the lampposts in my square um, through dialogue with the council and the resident association. That has enabled my neighbours at number 22, then their new car is an electric car, which they wouldn't have done that if we didn't have those charge points in the square. So, um, you know, you can see how actually individual action, you know, you can change the choice architecture at the neighborhood level um, to empower people to make better choices in their own lives. Um, you know, meanwhile, on the other hand, changes to national, international policy, they're so far removed from our ordinary lives that it's very difficult to feel any direct influence over those things. You know, I have friends in, in other charities who go to all of the UN meetings on climate change. They've been going to them for years. If you ask them, are you confident you've had any influence over this process? You know, they're not. They're, you know, so it, it can actually be very disempowering. And, you know, signing regular online petitions, you know, do you know if anything ever happened? It's like, um, you know, I'm not saying that stuff's not important, but it's not something that where you experience the change, right? In many ways, community action is the sweet spot. 
because through effort and persistence, working with other people locally, you can actually achieve a tangible outcome um, you know, that is an impact well beyond your own life. So you know, your neighborhood is in a very profound way the world of your lived experience. So if you make changes in your neighborhood, it feels as if you've changed the world. You know, so ev every, every evening after a long day, I'll come into my square and I see the blue lights blinking in a lamppost. It's, you know, it's very gratifying to me. I don't have an electric vehicle, but you know, that, that I, I experienced that as a, as a change that you know, I worked with others to help make happen. So um, I don't have the clicker, but let's, have, let's get my last slide up because I've got 30 seconds or something. Um, the three things that I, uh, that I would urge you to do, community energy, um, and there is an active group in Camden, it's called uh, Power Up North London, um, and you are very fortunate to have a local authority that has policy support for community energy, and uh, there is also support available from the mayor. So that's things like putting solar on your local school roof. Living streets, now this is, a, this is the hard thing, the controversial thing, we need to get the cars off the streets of the city, right? Um, and I'm sure there are people in this room who really depend on your cars either for work or you know, for other reasons. Fundamentally, we have to have large reductions in the overall traffic volume and cities is the place to do it. There are lots of different things that you can do about that, so please ask me questions about that uh, when I come around the tables. And then the last thing is more about preparing for the impacts of climate change than it is about stopping those impacts. Urban greening is very important. Um, you know, we need to replace a lot of the hard, shiny, reflective surfaces with green, soft um, surfaces. So we need to plant trees. Um, we need to do living walls, green roofs, um, you know, community allotments, that sort of thing. So uh, these are all very empowering things that you can get together with people in your local neighborhood and just do. Great, thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Leo. Okay, next, I'd like to invite...